Greetings everybody, welcome to the State Show, coming to you this week from one of the most exciting locations on the already exciting campus of Illinois State University. Today we are talking about eSports and specifically Redbird eSports. We're very fortunate to be on site for this episode in our state-of-the-art gaming facility. They've asked me not to touch anything in here and I've told them I can't help but touch your heart, loyal viewer. They then rolled their eyes and stressed the fact that I would be physically removed if I broke any of the equipment. Uh, moving on, this place is befitting a national powerhouse program, which is exactly what director of Redbird Esports, David Kirk, and others involved in Redbird Esports have built. And while most of you out there are not likely prospects for our varsity roster spots, after all, our players typically rank in the top 0.01% of all players in their respective games worldwide, we'll also talk about the ways the university is fostering a sense of community for gamers of all levels. Because if you're not already there, what you need to understand about gaming is it's not an isolated or isolating activity that relegates participants to dank basements for days at a time. Rather, online gaming is bringing young people together in ways not even traditional sports can. And Illinois State is proud to be a leader in this space, creating opportunities for students to compete, collaborate, and build skills applicable in the real world. While our varsity teams rack up wins and various titles on a national stage, involvement in our Redbird Gaming Clubs continues to grow across campus and academic offerings in areas like game design and audio and music production expand. Oh, and this show benefits by exploiting on-campus talent for our own personal gains. And with that as a segue, our Something Cool submission for today's episode is a glimpse of a game designed right here on campus by one of our game design students. Let's check it out. That is so cool. Okay, where were we? Oh yeah, Illinois State's pretty awesome at eSports. Like, we're sweaty, we're tryhards, we're goaded. Okay, you get the gist. And if you don't, you have much to learn about eSports and it's a good thing you're watching. Now to be clear, I've been using the term eSports somewhat loosely here, equating it with all online gaming. In fact, eSports typically refers to organized multiplayer video game competitions, much of it at a very high level, even professional. And while interest in it continues to balloon, so does online gaming at your average amateur level. In fact, research shows that four out of five Gen Zers play video games. They play for an average of seven hours a week, and only slightly more than half of these gamers identify as male. 78% indicate that online gaming enhances their personal relationships with others, and only 10% develop gaming addiction issues. So if you thought that gaming was an exclusively male, anti-social time suck that led to addictive behaviors, think again. There's a great deal of good that comes from video gaming, and the fact that it shows no signs of slowing down means there are new opportunities popping up all over for college students to do what they love. Today's students can receive scholarships to compete in varsity collegiate esports, they can find and connect with like-minded friends on campus, and they can develop marketable skills in growing industries that support the gaming ecosystem. And because I just used the word ecosystem, it means it's time for me to quit while I'm ahead. Fortunately, we have as our guest today someone whose esports vocabulary extends well beyond mine. He was kind enough to let us crash his lovely place of work for this episode. He's a national expert on esports, and he's just a darn nice guy. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Redbird Esports Program Director, David Kirk. David. Jeff. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for uh, being our guest today and, and letting us into this awesome space. Absolutely. I appreciate you coming in and checking the space out. Yeah, I was in here about a month ago, but every time I'm in here, I'm just more and more impressed. So it looks awesome. We've had a lot of uh, finishing touches come over the past month or so. So yeah. we're excited for you to be here. Let's jump right in. I mean, let's talk some Redbird Esports and, and you've had incredible success. Can you talk a little bit about, I mean, what's your, what's your secret? Uh, so I, I don't know if it's a secret, but uh, the university's commitment, I think, to esports and, and really going all hands on deck with it um, from the beginning has been one of the main reasons why we've been able to 
uh, achieve what we have. We've got some incredible leaders. Um, Jack Blonick, who was our student club leader prior to even my arrival here at ISU, uh, really catapulted the, the university to understand what esports are, as well as why they should be engaging with it. So um, that coupled with our ability to bring some of the top players in the country to represent us in intercollegiate competition uh, has been one of the reasons why we're able to have a facility like this for not just our, our competitive gamers, but also our casual gamers. Yeah, well, let's start with the competitive gamers. You just talked about being kind of at the top of the collegiate ranks. Um, you know, there's been some incredible varsity success. Will we start there? Maybe talk a little bit about the success at the varsity level. Yeah, so uh, this has also grown pretty significantly in the last uh, two years that Redbird Esports has realistically existed. Um, there are 400 plus universities right now competing in collegiate esports at a significant level. So that means scholarships, you know, coaching, dedicated facilities, or at least one or a couple of those. Um, our teams are all within the top 20 to 30 of those colleges competing. Uh, and our Overwatch team particularly is the number one team in the country and has been for uh, the last several months. Um, we've been able to break a lot of records, not just as a collegiate team, but also as an amateur team. So we're extremely excited. We've sent several players to the professional leagues, um, seven and counting total wow. right now, uh, who are representing us. And, and one of them just won a uh, North American championship just uh, a couple months ago. So we're very excited to have Redbirds representing us on the big stage, uh, but also we're uh, sending out coaches into the uh, collegiate and professional gaming world as well. Yeah, that's, that's incredible, incredible success in such a short amount of time at the varsity level. So um, good on you. Keep it up. Uh, on the other side, the club side, can we talk a little bit about um, what we offer for kind of your average gamer or what I would call your everyday student um, in the way of Redbird Esports? Absolutely. So this is one of the things that actually make um, the Redbird Esports program different amongst other universities in the country right now is we really have approached esports from more of a comprehensive lens where we want to ensure that students, regardless of their skill level or even their interest in being a competitive gamer, have the opportunity to be able to engage in this because we know it's huge, right? Pretty much everyone these days games um, and, and we recognize that a space like this, it takes away some of the barriers that a lot of students face, whether it be socioeconomic barriers or um, some of those, those barriers where it's tough to come in and make new friends, some of those social um, issues that, that the gamers or students face, particularly when they're freshmen in college. So right now we currently have about 1200 plus students who are engaging in one of our 16 to 17, it's fluctuating because we're also we're always adding and subtracting clubs. Um, but those clubs are centered around specific game titles. So Valorant, Super Smash Brothers. We even have non esport titles like Dungeons and Dragons and tabletop gaming who are connected with us. Um, and what we do is we support them by providing them access to a facility like this. And we also can help support them with things like travel or competition, um, getting them jerseys and a few other pieces. So it doesn't matter if you are a competitive game and you just aren't there for a varsity level place yet, or you're just a casual gamer who likes to come in and play a few games of Madden with your friends. We have something for you here, which we're extremely excited about. Yeah, and, and you touched on the facility, and obviously we're in this beautiful space. I think we need to talk about it. How do you manage demand when you're looking at the number of students and how popular um, esports have become? How do you manage demand in this space? How do you monitor or do you monitor kind of individual usage of the machines and time in here and that sort of thing? And then really, can you give us just a quick overview of what, what, what is in the facility? Yeah, so um, I'll start with what's in the facility. Sure. I think that's probably the easiest place, but we've got 60 high-end gaming PCs and what we call our main gaming floor, which is what we're sitting in right now. This floor is open and accessible to any student. So you just come in, you swipe your ID card, and then you have access to not only these PCs, which are some of the top of the line that you can currently get on the market, but you also have access to a library of game titles. So we really wanna make this a seamless transition for any student who's coming from class or who just wants to come in and spend some time here. Uh, we have games that we own as Redbird Esports, just in case they don't own a copy of the game themselves, but we also have the ability for them to be able to sign into their own games. Um, something really unique about this space also that we're excited about are our consoles. So we do have six console stations and each station has a PlayStation 5, an Xbox Series X, and a Nintendo Switch. So the newest generation of consoles and we have a number of game titles that we can provide students via a checkout process for those as well. 
So can we talk a little bit then? I mean, that's phenomenal. And, and we are sitting in this beautiful space with, uh, I can see some of this, this high-end equipment you're talking about. Um, switching to kind of monitoring students, how do, you, how do you manage demand in a space like this when you have this kind of equipment? Yep, so um, currently we've got a reservation priority system for our clubs, uh, but we only have a certain number of these stations that we'll take off line at one time for our clubs to be able to use for competition or practice or just a casual social gaming event that they might want to have. Um, we do have other students who we just want to come in and use the space and have access to it and not have to worry about setting up a reservation. We're going to monitor that for this first semester that we're open to see what that process looks like. Um, currently, we don't really have to worry about that because um, our students are matriculating in and out and then in the evenings when we're the busiest because most people game in the evenings. Yeah. Um, we haven't ran into the issue of running out of PCs nor consoles yet. Um, we do monitor the amount of time that students can play in here though. So um, that's a question we often get from parents is, you know, can my kid just come in and spend all day every day in here? The answer is no. Right. Um, so the, the best research that we have access to right now says that most students, most gamers game about two hours per day. So what we did was we took that number and we extrapolated over the course of a semester and we came up with about 213 hours that students have over the course of a semester to be able to use the space. I will say from experience, some students can use all of that time and more and still succeed and excel in the classroom and then some students can't. So we're actually working on setting up a process where um, once a student hits that 213 hours, they have to individually meet with me as kind of a wellness check just to make sure that we can see where they're at, they're doing what they need to do and they're not doing what we call as over gaming. Sure. So uh, it sounds like you guys have thought of everything. Is there something that I haven't asked you that you'd like our viewers to know? So one of our big initiatives moving forward now that we have a space like this is to start working and collaborating more with uh, event or game publishers to bring major events to this facility because it is one of the largest collegiate sports arenas in the country um, as it exists today. Uh, and we do have the capacity to be able to bring in major game titles like Overwatch or League of Legends, Call of Duty, Valorant, Super Smash Brothers, to be able to host major national, whether it be professional or collegiate based competition. We're also hoping to be able to bring a lot of high schools into the space to be able to start showing what Illinois State has to offer uh, and recognizing that high school is also a growing competitive esports ecosystem in its current state. So we're, we're very excited for uh, a lot of things uh, and additionally, we're looking at being able to start connecting and collaborating with some of our academic partners on campus and creating opportunities for students, whether it be internships or experiential learning opportunities to add to their portfolio in order to be able to go into the industry. So this space allows us to accomplish all of that, whereas you know, some of the spaces that we've had before have been primarily for our competitive varsity gamers. Well, I'll tell you what, every time we talk, um, I know why you are in this position. You are absolutely an expert, and uh, this has been enlightening. It's been really entertaining, and, and I appreciate it. I know um, it's almost time for me to leave, but you had said you might want to um, trash me in one of these games before we, we do that, and, and I'm, I'm open if that's still on the on the, on the cards. So, I mean, if, if you would entertain me, I'd love to play you in a game of Super Smash Brothers. I've heard that you've got a mean Kirby. Uh, and and I'd I love knew to what see that, that meant, um, I'd have a better shot at, at winning this game. But you know what, David? Let's do it. I'm, I'm always game. So let's, let's go. Let's do it. All right. All right. Let's do this thing. I'm getting out of there. Stop jumping. Here, let's bring this person in. I don't know what they do, but it's not good for you. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> Get out of there. Oh boy, that's bad. That was well. Highly, that didn't go well. That was highly effective. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hello. Come on. Come back. Oh. Good game. Well played. David Kirk, everybody. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks, Chef. It was yeah. great seeing you. Likewise. Okay, gang. Now that I'm even more humiliated than I typically am at this point in the show, let's wrap things up. But before we go to the big finish, let's check our swag bag giveaway today. Hey. We've got a Redbird Esports t-shirt, compliments of David himself. Our lucky winner will be randomly selected from those of you who email us at admissions at illinoisstate.edu and type State Show Esports shirt in the subject line. That's State Show Esports shirt as your subject. I promise it's easier to type than to say. We'll check our email, find our winner, and mail your shirt in the very near future. Good luck.
With that, our time together is coming to a close. And by now, I must have touched some piece of equipment in here that I shouldn't have. So let me summarize what we've learned before I get kicked out. First, we know that interest in online gaming and esports is only increasing among young people across the country. Second, we know that this activity is generally social and serves as an outlet for friends to connect over a shared interest. Third, this interest isn't limited to a particular gender or demographic. Be it on phones, tablets, computers, or consoles, it seems everyone's playing games these days. It only makes sense then that more and more universities are providing additional opportunities for gamers at all levels, from purely recreational to club and varsity athletes. And while schools are rushing to accommodate these students, Illinois State's already there. For years, we've been increasing our commitment to and support of esports and gaming. We boast one of the most competitive varsity programs in the country, including the greatest amateur Overwatch team ever assembled. We've hired talented and experienced coaches across various game titles, built out incredible spaces for gaming and collaboration, and developed new curricular programs and experiential learning opportunities to prepare our students for future careers in the gaming industry. In short, if you love gaming, Illinois State should be on your list of schools to consider. And come to think of it, if you don't love gaming, Illinois State should still be on your list of schools to consider. That is, unless you don't like universities that are forward-thinking and student-centered, committed to supporting the full collegiate experience and dedicated to enhancing your quality of life. If that's not your thing, don't give Illinois State a second thought. But if that sounds pretty good, come check us out. We'd love to meet you when you're here. Until then, thanks for watching. Take care of yourself and others, and go Birds.